Hey guys, this is the first video in a series of videos I'll be creating that explains how to install the Forcepoint 8.4 um, security suite uh, consisting of web, email, and DLP. Uh, the very first thing I'm, I'd like to go over is preparation. Preparation is key in any Forcepoint product installation. We have several documents and guides out there that explain how to properly size your servers that you're installing this on, as well as how to properly set up the OS before installation. Please go over those documents and prepare your servers accordingly. To give you a quick example of what those look like, these are actually the 8.4 documents that you can find uh, on our support site under documentation. You'll see system requirements for this version uh, going over all the requirements of the Forcepoint Manager and various hardware uh, components you'll need to install some of our software. And then you'll also see documentation on installing the particular product uh, that you're, you're looking to install in your environment. So this particular instance is for web security. And if you go to prepare for the installation, you can see it provides preparation steps for your database server, as well as preparing your Windows server, so key components like disabling uh, antivirus or uh, the firewalls on the machines as as well as uh, disabling user account control or data execution prevention. Those settings are very critical in making sure the installation is uh, successful for any Forcepoint products. So please, please prepare these servers accordingly before you install any Forcepoint solutions. One more document that I just want to throw up on the screen real quick. Uh, is a supplement document that I've made going over the SQL Server preparation for uh, any Forcepoint web, email, or DLP solution. I just think this clarifies things a bit more clearly uh, around the proper server roles for each of the databases and then the user mapping rules you'll need uh, to put in place for the service account you use to install um, all of the uh, Forcepoint solutions. So point blank, just make sure that you're meeting these requirements on this page when you're setting up the account you're going to use an SQL server um, and that the account has these roles and user mappings assigned to it. All right, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started with the installation. Uh, your first step would to uh, be to right click on the installer and select run as administrator. This actually executes a long extraction process that takes probably you know about five to ten minutes. Um, well, at least on my particular installation, it does because I'm actually running on some relatively dated hardware. Uh, depending on the uh, server specs that you're installing this on, it may go a lot quicker. Um, so I've already run the extraction process. Uh, once you do that, there'll be an, and, and you close out of it, there'll be an option to keep your installation files. And if you've already done that, exited out, and selected Keep Installation Files, you can simply go to Program Menu in Server 2012 and select Forcepoint Security Setup. It'll be in there and run as admin, and it'll be ready to go. But basically, after the extraction process that I was talking about earlier, this is the screen that you'd be taken to. So to get started, you have to install the uh, Forcepoint Management Infrastructure. So we'll walk through a couple pre-installation screens first. Um, so I'm just going to select Start here, agree to the subscription agreement. And I like to do a custom installation because I can really pick and choose the components I want. Um, I would recommend uh, doing a custom installation just to get more familiar with uh, the Forcepoint security installer and the options you have in it. Uh, if you're just going for a very quick install and, and your organization isn't uh, that large and you have some flexibility as far as how you deploy it and uh, um, the timing at which it gets deployed and, and uh, you have some time to kind of play around with it, then go ahead and just do the quick um, Forcepoint Security Manager installation for web, email, or DLP. But I'm going to do custom in this case and hit next. And I'll hit next again. All right, so this brings me to my installation window. You always have to start off with the Forcepoint Management Infrastructure installation, first and foremost. So we'll go ahead and click Install here. This is going to run through a couple 
uh, checks beforehand. So I'll hit next, uh, letting me know I'm going to install in this directory. Oh, saying I must. Oh, it's just giving me a warning saying I must have a static IP address. Fortunately, my server um, has a DHCP signed address, but let me go ahead and correct that. All right, I've went ahead and uh, assigned the static IP address to this machine. Um, I was doing uh, DHCP uh, um, static assignments from my router before. I forgot I needed to have this machine set up as a static IP as well. So uh, that's done. So I'll just go through the process again. We'll see if it throws that warning, and it didn't. It lets us on to the next step. All right, and now we're on the step where we're configuring our SQL server. Um, I don't want to install SQL Server Express. I have a predefined SQL server that I'll be using. Something that helps that I do is I fill out a, uh, a Word document um, with all the necessary information I'm going to need for the installation. So things like service accounts that you'll be using to do the installation. I do recommend utilizing uh, a single service account for all things Forcepoint when installing. It just makes management across the board far easier than if you use several different service accounts to try to keep track of uh, um, what different accounts you're using for which components. Uh, things like the IP address of the manager, um, the username and password for the local account on the manager, um, the SMTP server you're going to use, Active Directory servers, uh, all the information on your SQL server you want to keep at hand, etc. So there's a lot um, that you can kind of pre uh, predefine before you go into the installation to help with this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some info off the sheet that I have pre-populated. For this portion, I'm going to choose to use Windows authentication. So to, to best simulate a uh, enterprise production environment. And again, you want to try to use the same service account across the board for all things Forcepoint. Um, because in this step, if you choose to use Windows Auth, what it's going to do is take the uh, service account that you used or the account you used to log into the Forcepoint Tracking Manager, and it's going to pre-populate that as the account, the account to be used uh, for the SQL. You know, just one thing to note is when you log in to your Triton Manager or your Forcepoint Manager server, uh, you want to log in with the service account that you've kind of set up for all things Forcepoint. I've got that account set up. I'm going to go ahead and put in the password for that. All right, next. Okay, looks like it verified correctly. So now we're going to choose the IP address that this machine is using. Um, this machine only has one IP assigned to it, so uh, we're choosing that one. And it is now asking for the service account to be used uh, for the installation of Forcepoint security components. So again, we're using that same service account that we used to log into the server to establish the SQL uh, connection. Let me go ahead and put the credentials in there. Hit next. All right, now we're creating the default administrator account. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put in my username and password for the admin account, um, or actually just the password. We're going to go ahead and make that we don't necessarily need to configure this particular step right now, um, but I'm going to go ahead and do that.
and we can just verify the pre-installation summary that everything went well. Hit next. And we'll go ahead and install the uh, Forcepoint management infrastructure. All right, looks like the installation completed. Now let's go ahead and click on finish. And we'll just let it wrap some final things up. All right, looks like all is good with the Force Point Management Infrastructure installation. Please check out my next video series that will go over installing web, DLP, and email security.